Looking out across Sandwith Moor, I can see the Washburn Valley, brown, green of the trees, still shrouded in the early morning mist. It's an early spring morning. In fact, the equinox was just a few days ago, and today's probably going to be the warmest day of the year. Forecast blue skies and 16 degrees. I'm here on the hills between Otley and Harrogate for a short walk today through woodland and farm tracks. It looks like it's going to be a glorious day. The path initially starts from the road and I'm heading towards uh, an, out an outcrop of gritstone called Little Armscliff, a mile or so down the track. The path skirts a, a large coniferous forest. To the left is a wide open expanse of moorland with sheep. To the right, dense pine forest. The stuff of fairy tales. Certainly looks as if trolls and goblins could be living in those dark depths. Walking has always been a, a passion. I've decided to make a podcast to share some of the lovely days out that I spend in the countryside, some of the beautiful places that I see. We are on the eastern edge of the Pennines, not the grandeur of, of the Yorkshire Dales or the Lake District, but it's still beautiful, big skies, maybe 20 miles from Leeds, Bradford, Harrogate, and yet very rural and very peaceful. I'm following a boundary fence for the forest now. Um, the sun's risen to my, to my right in the east. The mist is clearing. My journey here was up the Wharf Valley through Harewood and it was beautiful. The whole valley was shrouded in mist. The sky was grey. Now that grey is giving way to blue except to my right where there is just a very large dark green wall. The moor itself isn't what you would associate with other moors in the north, vast heather clad lumps of land. This one is mostly grass from the sheep grazing that goes on in these parts. Very marshy, very wet. Uh, I thought things may have dried out a little bit from the weather we've had recently. But it's a bit squishy underfoot. Actually, this year, up to the equinox, winter was in full throws. We seemed to be having storm after storm, weeks of wind, rain, but not quite freezing, but very cold temperatures. And then, literally today, the forecast is incredible for the next week. Uh, 16 degrees, beautiful sunshine. I think I hear a skylark out on the moor. This is one of my sort of go to walks. Um, I, I hadn't really done it, I've driven past this forest dozens of times on the way to the Dales and um, it was during the first lockdown when we were allowed to travel further from home for the first time um, where I live is very flat quite urban and I was getting out most days but not feeling good about myself so the first chance I got, I came up here and, and it was wonderful to see the big skies, the big expanse of moor 
and I had such a lovely day. As I walked down the path, as a roe deer was stopped in the middle of the path, I had one of those wonderful moments where you, two living creatures, 50 feet apart, before it did what deer usually do in the presence of humans and bolted and soon disappeared into the forest. A barbed wire topped fences to my right, separating the two plantations. At the other side of it is standing water and mounds of of moss cover the ground. The sun's glinting through the trees on the moss on the water. It really does look otherworldly. There's a large tree falling across the path. jet to pass high overhead and there's a pool here um, which was on the edge of the thick forest uh, but the whole area is now being cleared and it looks so different it was a beautiful pool that was uh, in the dark surrounded by trees Occasional dragonflies. The pool's still there, still nice, but the forest in the era so since I last came has disappeared. Ahead on a slight rise in the in the hill is the gritstone outcrop of Little Armscliff. They're a common feature in this area. There's the actual Armscliff crags nearer to Harrogate, Brimham Rocks near Pateley Bridge, Cowan Calf Rocks at Ilkley. What first brought me to this walk was something I'd read on the internet that there was a, a cup and ring marking, carving on the rock. It's a hole the size of a cup with a, with a ring around it. And there are hundreds of them in this, in this area. Uh, I'm not sure if people actually know what they were for, whether they were religious or, or to do with the settlements that were here. But they've been here, people who know more than I do about the subject tell me for thousands upon thousands of years since the Bronze Age. And that kind of thrills me to be able to stand in stones or markings on rocks that have withstood the test of time. And somehow, I'm sure how, but as a link to the past, you're touching something, feeling something. A fellow human touched 5,000 years ago. What started just a few minutes ago as standing pools in the forest. I've now become a, a little stream.
and there it is as I pass the end of the tree line the ground rises on all sides for a hundred feet or so there's an old broken down wall that takes the path up to Little Arms Cliff a jumble of of rocks the smaller sister the smaller brother of the bigger Arms Cliff track a few miles away the forest I've just walked through is a mile or so behind me as I'm climbing steadily through the tussocky grass to the to the outcropper I think today is a day to enjoy and delight in the song of the skylark it to the top of the rocks probably the height of a three story building used by climbers but it's beautiful coming round the Washburn Valley now has almost disappeared in a in a hazy mist there's the forest there's, there's the radio mast on the Norwood edge it really is wonderful Skylark has just ascended right in front of my eyes. It was two or three foot off the ground, its little wings beating as fast as they will go against the sky. And it sings and sings and sings as it climbs, drifting now on the wind. really are a joy to watch going higher and higher and higher and singing all the time and then suddenly dropping like a stone to the ground There really is something quite magical about walking in forests. The light streaming in, fractured by hundreds of trees. And in this one, unlike the previous plantation, the light does reach all the way to the forest floor to stimulate new growth. The path gets worse. Fallen trees, pools of water, mud. Something almost prehistoric about the setting. I've been climbing to the edge of the forest and there's a trig point. Usually in this country there are concrete pillars set up by the Ordnance Survey when mapping was done. I think on land long before aeroplanes and satellites did it so as I come out of the forest there's an old stone wall looking out again towards the Washburn Valley 
farmhouse to the left, the radio beacon on Norrid Edge, way in the distance on the right now. And a concrete trig point in a farmer's field. I'm now on Stainburn Moor and the trig point is shown as 245 metres high. I had to follow a diversion which has taken me out onto the most splendid open farmland with beautiful well preserved dry stone walls. Um, just come through a sheepfold filled with sheep. Obviously it's the heart of the lambing season um, and this is lovely, the sun is high and bright now, no mistaking that it's spring, the hills and valleys dip and rise around me, there's still that, that mist in the air and what deciduous trees there are, still wearing their bare winter coat. I've dropped down a little way now from the farm and I'm walking along a, uh, the Colin Green Lanes, which has taken me across Stainburn Moor from the trick point. And now I'm heading back, soon I'll be heading back towards Norwood Edge and I'll be crossing Lindley Moor but this is a lovely lane it's got a wall on one side and the pastures and farmhouses and then on the right hand side a broken down wall and a series of gnarled old Hawthorn trees that look hundreds of years old, and beyond those are more rising into the distance. I've turned off the green lane now and heading across Lindley Moor. The path follows a small stream, again with old trees and gorse, little stream flowing in the bottom. I can see Stainburn Forest again in the distance. The lichen on the trees, there's no leaves but every branch has got a wonderful covering of of lichen that's built up over the over the years. It's a really interesting section of walk. Just follow the old wall up. There are old buildings, old sheepfolds, all tumbled down, all with the obligatory ancient tree or trees growing out of them. I've just stopped for a few moments as I'm climbing over Lindley Moor back towards the forest. Take my breather and had a coffee, sat on a stile. The forest is actually about two or three hundred metres to my right. And all the while I've been sitting here there's a pair of Buzzards about maybe a quarter of a mile away. I'm not an expert by any means, and the podcast isn't isn't meant to be a um, definitive nature podcast. It's literally a an account of my little adventures um, that I have, the time I spend outdoors exploring staying fit
stay insane. I, I saw some a few weeks ago, there was about five of them all flying around a female. It was fascinating. I watched them for about 10 minutes. Apparently that's called a kettle of buzzards. They keep her gaze fixed while they're flying around her, showing off, hoping to mate. These two have been watching for about 10 minutes now and it looks as if they're nesting at the top of a of, of a tree and they keep landing on the nest and taking off. What a wonderful spectacle. They're, they're both high in the sky now and almost not, well, not almost, they're not moving. They're stationary in the wind. I've just come back through the gate that brings me into Stateburn Forest. The last little section of the walk now uphill towards the radio mast on Norwood Edge. This is one of my favourite places on the whole walk, just, just inside the gate, looking out over the hills to the south. There's a bench by a small pond uh, that in summer is beautiful, it's dragonflies, reeds, wildflowers, bees, butterflies. It's uh, all looking a bit bedraggled at the moment, but I'm sure in a few weeks it'll be brimming with life. I'll have a good look at it in a moment to see if there's any frog spawn or toad spawn. I've just been stood for 20 minutes talking to a farmer and uh, asking him about the lambing. I think he said they'd had 34 lambs already, but most of their sheep uh, are still pregnant and there's quite a lot more still to come. I commented on, on how beautiful the view was today with the, the, the mist clinging to the, the vales and the hills. And he said it'd be better on a clear day because from here he said you could see across three valleys, across Wharfdale, which is over towards Hill Clay Otley, across Airedale, which is the other side from, from there, Keithley, uh, and then down as far as Calderdale and Hebden Bridge. He said you could see a wind farm at Hebden Bridge, which must be 30 miles away. And then going the other way from the the hill I've just been on, on a clear day, you can see York Minster and the three power stations that were at Ferry Bridge, Egborough and Drax. I think sitting on this bench enjoying the view was the whole purpose of today's walk. So I think I'll just enjoy it for a few minutes. The last stretch now of the walk, there was no frog spawn in the pond. I don't know if it's early in general or early because up in the north, up in the hills. The pines here, they're really mature on one side, very tall, very densely planted, but on the left, young trees look like big Christmas trees. Got a beautiful blue, blue tinge. I'm now in the main part of the forest, 
a long, long, broad avenue. Tall trees on either side. The sky now clouding over above. And the place is deserted. And not much of a sound really, apart from me. The path has uh, been steadily rising through the forest. I do reach some more high ground and I believe there's another trick point hereabouts. But first of all I've picked my way up through the trees to an area that's shown on the map as Hunter's Stones. It's another one of these millstone grit outcrops. In this case it literally looks like somebody's picked up a fistful of boulders and just flung them around. Shortly after leaving Hunter's Stones, the forest changes faces again, takes on a dark, damaged, sinister feeling. Must have suffered a lot in the recent storms as there are uprooted trees everywhere. And lots of them are covered in some kind of slime. And the path deteriorates into pools that I'm certain could swallow a hiker. I did take a wrong turn in, in the forest, which is easy to do because this is really now just like one giant maze. Huge walls of green and blackness to either side. The only light directly above you. The sun though has come back out and is shining on the path. My inadvertent route finding, well my route finding fault, has actually led me back towards my car. So I think I'm probably going to call it a day for today. This was my first ever podcast I hope it gives you a flavour of my day in some splendid Yorkshire countryside. I hope there'll be many more of these little adventures to come. I would be delighted if you could join me next time when I head out for a walk. Thanks for listening and cheerio!